the information we're going to be browsing in here is uh, going to be a SQL database. If you have ever worked with a SQL database before in a technical capacity, this is going to look familiar to you. For others, this will be new. This is an interface. I need to type in a password here. An interface that SQL type people, SQL geeks, use to interact with a SQL database. The database we're going to be working with is Sakilla. It has a number of tables in it. Uh, it's simulating, it's just a fanciful made up database for testing purposes. It simulates a uh, video tape rental store. It has a table of actors with a couple hundred actors and a table of films with a couple hundred films, a uh, table of customers with uh, 599 customers in it. And just using the, uh, in fact, the, all told, this has uh, 16 tables, 89 columns, and about 300,000 individual pieces of information. It's not a massive database, but it's big enough that we can do ex some experimenting with it. So people uh, working internally within SQL here, they query this data with SQL query statements. For instance, here in my list of actors, I have uh, one, two, three, four columns. Uh, each actor is given an actor ID number, and then I have a first name and a last name and an update date for each actor. That's my actor table. You can think of it as like an Excel spreadsheet. Then I ha also have a table of films, and I have a linking table named film actor, which tells me that actor number one is in film number one, actor one is also in film number 23 and film number 25, actor number two is in films 3, 31, 47, and so forth. So it's a, a, a linking table. All of the information in this database is interrelated. If I want to actually answer a question from this data, using this SQL editor interface, I would have to type in a SQL query like, uh, suppose I want to find out uh, all the films that uh, actor number one, let me go back to my actor table, actor number one is Penelope Guinness. I don't want to find out all the films that Penelope Guinness has appeared in. So my SQL statement would be select from the film table, the title of the film, uh, the tables I need to look in are named film and film actor, which relates actors to films. Uh, and I want to show only the films where the film actor's uh, ID number actor ID is number one. That's Penelope's number. And I need to link that to the film, uh, film ID column with the film actor tables film ID column. So that should illustrate that this is a cumbersome process, right? <laughs> Let's see if this even works, if I haven't make it made any typos. There's my query, and I execute that query. It did work. Here it's given me some titles of movies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I've got 19 film titles that uh, Penelope has appeared in. The first three are Academy Dinosaur, Anaconda Confessions, and the Angel's Life. Uh, you don't need to write those down, but, but kind of remember those titles because they're going to appear again at the end of this process. The illustration there is just to show what it's like navigating a SQL database uh, with native SQL tools. 
cumbersome for people who know how to do it. And for the rest of us, it's, it's completely outside the realm of possibility. It's so far out of our comfort zone, it might as well be on another planet. So instead of using that method, I'm going to close this up. Let's show how we would do similar things using Doxera DB4. What if I, uh, having access to this database, want to know how many customers I have? I can use my data function command here to create uh, a data function that's going to look in the Sakilla database. That's one of many databases I have access to. I want to look at my customer table, uh, and I just want to count them up. Give me a count of how many customers I have. That created a data function field. When I click the fill button, oh, 599. I have 599 customers. Let me reset that. All right. What if I want to know how many films there are in my database? Again, I click data function, choose the data state database I want to look in. This time, let's look in the film table and let's get a count of how many films there are. Click the fill button. Ah, I have 1,000 films in my database. Reset. Let's ask another question. How many of those 1,000 films are rated PG, PG-13? Put in another function. Look in my Sakilla database. Look at my table of films. Uh, the column I want to look in is the rating column. I'm sorry. We're just going to count them up. I don't even have to worry about the column. But the filter. This time, instead of including all rows, instead of including all of my films, I'm going to apply a filter. I only want to look at the films where the rating is this text, PG-13. And I'm going to count up those. I'm not counting all the films. I'm only counting up the PG-13 films. That creates an option. I click the Fill button. And out of my 1,000 total films, 223 of them are rated PG. Reset. All right. Well, what are they? Let's see a list of those 213 PG-13 films. I think it was 213. I'm going to create this time not a data function, but a data table. In the data table screen, I'll choose which database I want to look in, which table I want to look in. It's the film table. And I want to show, uh, let's show the title and the running time for each film. So the title is here, and the running time is called uh, length. Those are the two columns I want to include. I'm going to sort that uh, table by title alphabetically. And I'm going to filter it. Remember, I don't want to show all of the movies in my database, all 1,000 of them. I just want to show the 200 and some that are rated PG-13. So I turn on the filter, and I say, only show me the ones where the rating is this text, PG-13. Click OK. I get a chance to add whatever headings I like here. Let's call this column movie and this column uh, running time. When I click the fill button, remember we have 200, 200 and some films, and there it's done. That's as long as it takes. Here I have one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten pages of films. These are all rated PG-13, and here's the running time for each one of them. Well, that makes me curious. I see the various lengths of these films. I wonder what is the longest film I've got. This is going to use a different function. I'll click the data function button. I want to look in my Sakilla database. 
I'm going to look at that film table again. This time I'm going to look in the length column where the running time for each film is, is listed. And I'm not going to use the count like I did before. I'm going to use maximum. I want to know what is the maximum film length among all my films. And I click fill. And I see there's my 200 and some films being listed again. Ah, the longest movie is 185 minutes long. Well, I wonder if there are multiple movies that are that long. Let's do another data table. And this time show me from the same database, the film table. Uh, we'll put in, let's see, let's put in their titles and their synopsis. So I've got a title column and a description column will give the synopsis. Again, I'm going to sort them by title. And again, I'm going to filter them. But this time, I'm going to only show the films where the length is this number, the number 185. How many films run? Uh, how many films uh, have a running time of 185 minutes? And I will change my headings to something I like, like uh, movie and running time. No, we're putting in the synopsis on this one. Synopsis. When I click the fill button, I end up with, there's my 200 PG-13 movies that are listed. And then it went so quick I didn't see it. But here are my, there's a lot of them. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten movies that run 185 minutes and a synopsis for each one. So all kinds of capability just to browse around amongst your data. You can also make this interactive. Instead of building these fields uh, from scratch like I've been doing, you can have a questionnaire create, here we go, a questionnaire uh, created by a form author which asks some friendly questions of your form user in order to come up with the information. This one here asks the form user, what's their favorite movie? When they click the fetch button, it gives them a list of the 1,000 movies in our database currently. And they can choose their favorite movie off the list. Let's say it's Ace Goldfinger. And then it asks for their favorite actor. I'll click fetch. Here's my list of 200 actors. And remember before we were talking about Penelope something or other? Penelope, here she is, Penelope Guinness, we talked about before. Let's say she's our favorite actress. Then when I click the fill button, I can have my form fill in all of the actors in my favorite movie, whatever it may be, and all of the movies with my favorite actor, whomever she may be. Let's click fill and try it out. And we can see that. There it is. Here, uh, my favorite movie is Ace Goldfinger. Here's all the actors in that movie. And here, my favorite actor, actor is Penelope Guinness, and here's those, what was it, 19 movies that Penelope is in? Remember Academy uh, Dinosaur, Anaconda Confessions, and Angel's Life were the first few of those. So all that information is accessible to us. We can actually reach into that database, grab out the information we're interested in, and uh, put it in a document in, in, in whatever format we like. Uh, imagine now all these, let me hit reset here, all these questions we've asked and answered, what if I need to generate these answers, not just today, but maybe once a month? All of this information, I need to get uh, current and generate a monthly report. I can just save this document as a form, I can spruce it up, 
put any sort of uh, uh, language into it that I need, uh, along with all of these questions asked and answered, arranged however I please, save that as a form, and then once a month, I just open it up, click the fill button, and my report is done. All of the information gathered, analyzed, and presented. 